At the end of the Third Age, the Dark Lord Sauron unleashed a massive war that involved almost all the peoples of Middle-earth. Orcs, trolls, people of the East and South joined Sauron, and people of the West and North, elves, even hobbits, opposed him. The Lord of the Rings books and movie adaptations show the armies of Rohan and Gondor, squads of elves, hordes of orcs and trolls, even an army of ants is present, and hobbits and eagles. That is, almost all peoples were involved in the conflict. But there was another nation in Middle-earth, which as if it did not take part in the War of the Ring at all, dwarves. Of all the dwarves, only Gimli, son of Gloin, is represented in the story. He, of course, became one of the members of the Fellowship of the Ring and played an important role, but it seems that one dwarf is not enough for such large-scale events. There were, however, a few other dwarves who arrived with Gimli as part of their people's delegation to the council at Rivendell. But after the council, they disappeared from the story and were never mentioned again. And in the end, Gimli remained the only representative of his people to appear in the Lord of the Rings. But where are the glorious armies of dwarves that fought and terrified the enemies in the First Age, that were shown in The Hobbit and even in the series Rings of Power? Why does Gimli have to act for everyone? Let's get to the bottom of it. Do the events of the Lord of the Rings apply to the dwarves? Maybe the dwarves were so independent and self-sufficient, living in their mountains, that all these terrestrial problems and conflicts just didn't bother them. Partly so. Dwarves really preferred to focus on their own lives and not get involved in the affairs of other nations and states. For example, the same Khazad-dum, which later became Moria, existed back in the First Age, when Middle-earth was shuddering from the Great War with Morgoth. But the dwarves of Khazad-dum preferred not to participate in those wars, but prospered peacefully and quietly and accumulated wealth. But there were other dwarven kingdoms in those times. Nogrod and Belagost, and here they were at war, and not only with Morgoth, but also with their elf neighbors. Thus, the dwarves of Nogrod ravaged the elven kingdom of Doriath. In the Second Age, the dwarves intervened several times in the continent's global conflicts. For example, they opposed Sauron when he attacked the elven kingdom of a region, where the rings of power were forged, and then helped the surviving elves escape in their caves. Then at the end of the Second Age, the dwarves participated in the War of the Last Alliance, which resulted in Sauron being defeated and disembodied. However, there were also dwarves who sided with the Dark Lord in that war, but little is known about them. In the Third Age, the dwarves found themselves alone with their terrible enemies, Balrog, dragons, and orcs. Humans and elves did not help them, and so the dwarves themselves fought these monsters. Perhaps because of this, they developed a grudge against the other peoples of Middle-earth who refused to help them. Toward the end of the Third Age, the dwarves took part in the epic battle of the Five Hosts, where for the first time in many millennia again united in an alliance with the elves and humans. It would seem that in the War of the Ring that broke out soon after, the dwarves should have stood up to evil as well. So why didn't they? There were several reasons. Could it be that the dwarves had died out by then? Indeed, the Dwarven people had greatly dwindled by the end of the Third Age and continued to shrink. The powerful and numerous Dwarven settlements in the Beleriand Peninsula had died out in the end of the First Age, the Dwarves of the North having been largely wiped out or driven out by dragons as well as orcs. The film adaptation of The Lord of the Rings even shows the desolate kingdom of Moria, where Gimli discovered the remains of his kinsman, the Dwarf Balin. From the movie, one can indeed conclude that these were almost the last representatives of this people. However, this was not actually the case. Moria was long ago captured by the Balrog and Orcs, and Balin, shortly before the events of the Lord of the Rings, went there with a small detachment to reclaim the ancient homeland of his people. He failed, the troop died, but the remaining dwarves, albeit few in number, continued to inhabit Middle-earth. So that was not the reason. Were the dwarves too selfish? At the time of the events of the Lord of the Rings, there were several dwarven kingdoms and settlements in Middle-earth. The most powerful was Erebor, which I'll talk more about a little later. But besides the dwarves of the Lonely Mountain, there were other places where they lived. For example, 
It is likely that the Iron Hills were still inhabited by dwarves. Yes, many of them moved to Erebor after Smog's death, but it is not certain that all the inhabitants went there, abandoning the mines they had developed and the halls they had inhabited for many hundreds of years. It is also likely that there were scattered settlements of dwarves in other places. For example, in the Grey and Misty Mountains in the north. There were of course orcs there, but the dwarves had lived in those caves for a very long time and could still remain there. Also at one time, fleeing from Khazad-dum and Erebor, some of them founded settlements on the surface of the earth, for example in Dunland. Perhaps some of these settlements have also survived. They may have lived off of profitable trade with their neighbors. We should not forget about the dwarves who lived far to the east. Actually, there was the majority of this people, four of the seven clans. So, all these settlements and kingdoms really did not participate in the events of the Lord of the Rings. Most likely, because they did not care about the war of humans, elves, orcs, all sorts of dark lords. They lived in the depths of their caves and were focused only on the survival and well-being of their people, and therefore preferred simply not to interfere in the conflict on the surface. And they could be understood. But still, not all dwarves stayed away. Not for nothing did I mention Erebor, which by the end of the Third Age was the most powerful dwarven kingdom in the west of Middle-earth. It had traditionally been ruled by the dwarves of the Durin family, and Sauron had a long-standing grudge against them. The Dark Lord had sworn vengeance upon them after the people of Durin had helped the elves in a region after the creation of the Rings of Power. And the dwarves of Erebor knew this, and therefore felt it was their duty to oppose Sauron. It was from Erebor that a dwarven delegation, along with Gimli, came to Rivendell for Elrond's council. The dwarves of Erebor were ready to stand with the elves and men, but they were prevented. Sauron, having started the war in the Lord of the Rings, decided to attack not only Gondor with Rohan. The master of Mordor sent a huge army to the north, just to Erebor, as well as to the city of men lying next to it, Dale. There a horde of human Easterlings and orcs gathered and laid siege to the lonely mountain. Along with the dwarves, the humans also took refuge in Erebor, and the two people set about resisting Sauron. The siege of Erebor was long and fierce. Sauron's troops could not capture the dwarven kingdom, but the dwarves could not break through the enemy lines and go to the aid of men and elves who fought Sauron in Gondor, Rohan, and other places. That is, in the end, it turned out that the only nation of dwarves that was ready to stand against Sauron was trapped in Erebor. Formally, the dwarves still played their, quite important, role in the Lord of the Rings, but their role remained behind the scenes because the decisive battles and events took place to the south. In the end, it was Gimli who had to work for all the dwarves, who, having joined the Fellowship of the Ring, did not return to Erebor, and therefore was not locked up there, and eventually became one of the greatest heroes of his people. If you are interested, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe.